Okay. Well, good evening, everyone, officially, and welcome uh, to the listening session for the Los Alamos County Open Space and Trails Management Plan. Um, we're really excited that you all could join us this evening and take some time out of your busy schedules to uh, provide us with some really important feedback as we begin this planning process. Um, but let's start with some introductions here. Um, my name is Danny Wilson, and I am a planner working with Site Southwest. Uh, we're the consultant who's working with Los Alamos County on this planning project. And as I mentioned, we're just kicking things off and we'll be continuing this work through the end of the year. But before we dive in and learn a little bit more about who you all are on the call, I'm going to have my team introduce themselves as well. So maybe starting with Bob and then kick it over to Allie. Landscape architect, Site Southwest. About nine years now, but I've been doing trail planning forever practically. Um, so looking forward to learning more about this and trying to see what we can do to help out. And good evening, everyone. My name is Ali Kasky. I'm also a planner at Site Southwest, and I'll be supporting Danny and Bob on this project. Okay. Um, and I was going to say, we also have our county, uh, our project managers on the call as well. I don't know, Eric, Wendy, if you guys want to introduce yourselves. Sure, I'm uh, Eric Peterson, Los Alamos County Open Space Specialist. Hi, I'm Wendy Parker. I'm the Park Superintendent, and Eric and I are working on this project together. Okay, great. And thank you guys both. Um, so I, I also mentioned we want to hear a little bit more from you all. And so the way that we might try to do this is you doing a group chat waterfall, if you're familiar with this one. So uh, we're going to ask you to take a minute or two to write your name in the group chat. Uh, if you have an affiliation with a particular uh, recreation user group or a nonprofit, or if you're just a you know interested citizen, whatever that might be, add that to your name. And then if you want to think about this question of you know why did you come to this meeting tonight and what is most important to you about your trails and open space within the county. Maybe think about those things and add that after your name and affiliation. Um, and take just a minute or two to populate that into the group chat. Yeah, and go ahead and send it on through whenever you developed your response there. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Already got a diverse set of interests coming through there, birders, hikers, mountain bikers. Okay. Nature Center, yeah. Great. Oh, great to see some White Rock uh, residents as well. Welcome. Awesome. Oh, great. Okay. Well, and I'm glad to see there's a few folks mentioning, um, you know, experience with trail planning and maintenance, because that's a key part of this is, you know, it's not just staff and contractors and consultants who work on these projects. It's um, a lot of this is, as you well know, and probably have been involved in many of you in the past, it's volunteer effort. And so i um, glad to see uh, some folks jumping in who are already involved or interested, perhaps, in being more involved in those parts of this work. Okay. Yeah, thanks for that. And uh, we'll begin to get to know each other a little bit more as we get into breakup groups, which actually, let me just see how our numbers are looking. We might just do two tonight, but we'll see. We'll see where we are on our numbers. Decide when the time comes. Um, so first we wanted to give you just a little bit of background about the purpose of this plan and what we hope the outcomes will be. So this plan is going to be, uh, and this is pulled directly from the RFP, it's a project that will begin to consolidate and create a single document for managing trails and open space within the county, 
for the diverse set of interests and users who benefit from these spaces. Um, this is something that is designed uh, not to recreate work that has already gone into a lot of planning processes here in Los Alamos County, but rather it wants to consolidate what those plans have recommended and reconcile any conflicts within those plans for best practices, strategies, um, and what have you. This is something that we all are probably keenly aware of if you're a user of the trails and open space system is that these are really important spaces to the community. They're, if not one of the most important assets or quality of life amenities that you think about when choosing to live in a space because it, it truly does improve your overall health and quality of life. Um, it provides economic vitality to the community itself, both Los Alamos and White Rock. Um, and it also uh, is really important for environmental stewardship. The more we use and know and love these spaces, the more uh, ownership we tend to feel and pride in them. And, and that's something that we really want to foster too uh, through uh, the, the work here with Trails and Open Space. So we're not starting this work in a vacuum, as I mentioned. Uh, we're pulling from a lot of really rich content and work that came before us. So right here, we have a list of um, several previous plans that have been developed over the last decade or so, decade and a half, really, um, to inform what the county does in terms of best management and practices for trail maintenance, um, for updates or improvements, for expansion of those trails. Um, as well as there's some recommendations that the county is still acting on in terms of accessibility improvements and things of that nature. Um, also in, involved in this is a lot of restoration work, as you know. Um, it's a very topographically unique space uh, that the county occupies, and so a lot of can canyon restoration work um, goes into this and will continue to be a part of this planning in the future. And so, as I mentioned, we're, we're really just beginning this process, but in our first listening session, and then we also had a site visit where we came out last month and, and talked with staff about some of these different uh, common emerging needs. And they kind of all fall into what we see as three major buckets. There's a few that fall outside of these, but um, that first one is really holistic, I think, where um, we see common needs around overall user safety and a sense of belonging on the trails and within our open spaces uh, for all modes of recreation, whether you're on bike or on horse or, um, you know, observing nature, birding, uh, and for users of all abilities, we want to make sure we have trails that are developed as we can that are very accessible. Um, even with our topographical challenges, we want to have those available where we can throughout the community. And then also have uh, trails that are perhaps a little bit more uh, less developed or soft touch and uh, more natural surface that might not be accessible to all, all uh, wheels and abilities. Uh, the second bucket of emerging needs that we saw was around trail maintenance and erosion control. And I think I would extend this to say that, um, you know, this is for our open spaces as well. We just see that, you know, drainage flows can cause such uh, destruction throughout our trail system. And so how are we maintaining and creating trails that are better and more easily sustained and don't always succumb to that, uh, that water erosion? Um, that's something that we're looking at as well. And then the third bucket is um, how can we conserve these spaces, especially those that are both ecologically and culturally significant or historically significant while creating appropriate amenities to support all the different uses that happen here. So it's this balance of, you know, creating spaces that people can safely and appropriately access while also making sure people understand why we're not, um, why we're limiting access or exposure perhaps during certain seasons when um, certain animals are more vulnerable or if there's really important petroglyphs in a given area, this is something that we're all taking into consideration as we're moving forward. Um, so at this point, I think we're going to shift over to our discussion questions. Um, and I will say, so how we're going to do this, and let me just take a look at our numbers again. We've got 27 folks. I think we're going to divide into two groups to make this a little bit more um, so we can hear from more people uh, in a smaller context. 
And we're going to talk about a few questions under these three categories of common needs. So I'll quickly go through these now, but then as we break into our groups, you'll see that these questions will be off to the side as a reference point. And you'll have a facilitator, either Bob or Allie, um, in your group helping guide through the questions. So the first questions are about safety interactions among various users. And we're asking these questions of, are there any places where you feel unsafe on the trail system or related facilities? Why and what could be done to improve that safety? Second question is, where are, there, where are user conflicts most common and which user groups are most commonly involved? And we wanna to begin to think again about uh, as from a solution stand based standpoint, what approaches might be used to address those conflicts and what methods have already been tried Thirdly, we're going to look at, are there trails or places that you or someone you know would like to use but can't? And then asking why and what could be done to improve accessibility. And then lastly, what kind of balance would you like to see between provided, providing limited mobility access? So this is kind of a more improved surface trail and a less developed natural trail. I'll also say that these questions are in the meeting notice. So if you want to have that pulled up off to the side, if that's easier to see as we get into it, um, it's there as well. Um, so before we jump into our breakout groups, I just wanted to ask, are there any questions from folks on the line about where we're headed with this? And these are just some of our guiding questions. If you have pressing concerns that kind of fall outside the categories of this, we can bring those up. And we might be getting to them later in the discussion questions, or we might table them and talk about them afterwards at more, uh, at more, uh, excuse me, we might talk about them more afterwards if it, if it warrants a further conversation. I apologize for stumbling over my words there. Let me just look to, uh, Allie, do you see any raised hands? I just want to make sure I'm not missing anybody. Oh, go ahead. I heard someone. Okay, we've got two folks raising hands and let me jump through it. Oh, here we go. Oh. Sorry, we've got uh, no com resident. I think you're unmuted. Oh yeah, North Community. So- Oh, North Community resident, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. So I understand where this discussion is going and I hear a lot of stuff about trails, yes. but the one thing I don't, that I'm not hearing at all in any of these concerns is, so we can talk about trails to death and we have a ton of trails here and I'm a regular trail user, Sure, but we also have a lot of open space Yes, and we have a lot of open space that are recreational amenities. Mm -hmm. And what I find most concerning in the guidance when we're talking about developing a trails and open space plan is I don't hear anything about protection of open space and defining mm -hmm. what open space is. Mm -hmm. And I know that the Los Alamos County has several documents where they've actually flat out said that every bit of open space, which doubles as a uh, recreation space, is actually on the table for housing development. So these are things like the golf course. These are things like quote unquote un underutilized park spaces, um, tennis courts that are underutilized, other user facilities such as that. Mm -hmm. And I strongly believe that one of the things that we we have in this uh, that we need to acknowledge as a community is that open spaces are a positive part of a community. And sure. developing every square inch of everything except for a, a system of trails that snakes around housing developments and other things makes for a very awful community. And it also severely limits the, the number of users and other people who are interested in other things besides hiking yeah. or for people who are, um, you know, I think about my mother. She died several years ago. She would have loved to have gotten out on 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 places and really the only place that we have in this community where we could take her out was the paved trail out by the co-op that goes between the co-op and the park and the the i'm sorry the the fire station and so 
if we're having a plan for trails and open space, I think it's very, very important to acknowledge that those other open spaces and recreational amenities yeah. are just as important to this plan as things like trails. Definitely. And I do think that is something that because it's, yeah, trails and open space trails just tends to take the dominant force in that conversation given sort of the primacy of it in the community. But I think that you're absolutely right. We need to start looking at open space more holistically and start thinking about those protections at that high level and defining that. I think that you said that very well. But then also, I think you're right, looking at those other amenities that are offered in the open space more critically and, and to think about their value and how they're being used now and also how they could be used in the future. That's a great comment. And I saw one more hand raised that went down. I apologize. If I, can, if I can add one more thing. I mean, it's nice that it's a great comment, but it needs to be formalized in, in the plan. And it actually needs to be part of this um, part of the discussion that we're having if we're, yeah. if, if we're just talking about this stuff. And, and right now I don't see, I mean, I looked at what your major questions are. And so it's, it's, you, you've got access questions and mm -hmm. you've got cultural, uh, basically archeological and, and historic site preservation as part of this and erosion control. But I don't see anything about preservation of, of open space in there. Yeah, well, and this is here, here, I agree 100% with North Community. I'm not raising my hand because I couldn't find it on the app, but this is Jared, and I 100% agree with that. We quickly, very frequently keep hearing about open space being under attack in this community, and that's one of the greatest benefits that this community has is open space. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I'm glad you're both raising that. And I will say all of these comments and these notes are being recorded here. And so they will be a part of the both the planning process and they will show up in the document. Um, and so, but I do think if this is something that raises a larger concern, it might warrant a bigger and separate conversation even. Um, we wanted to make sure these questions were consistent with what we discussed with our in-person group so that there was no discrepancy between what we were hearing from these two groups. But I do think that this is a discussion that could be raised um, uh, more at a further time. Yeah, go ahead, Bob. Yeah, no, can you hear me okay? Yep, you're fine. Okay, cool. Um, I was just going to say, yeah, basically what you said there at the end, which is that mostly this is in the interest of time and trying to keep it to an hour and a half. We had to kind of limit it. So the first stab is actually at the trail system. And then after that, we'll look into the broader open space system too. So the intent was not to ignore it. Absolutely. But can I can I can I raise another thing? I'm sorry to keep pushing this. So I, I've lived in this community for fifty some years, um, and I have seen uh, process after process after process just like this one happen. And what we hear is we 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 have consultants like you come in and and create these focus groups, and it's kind of like when you you know, you can, you can design a focus group to come up with any answer that a person wants. It's, it's kind of like if you, if you shove a, a bowl of peas in front of a toddler and you said, don't you like the peas? And you nod your head and hand them a handful of peas. The toddler will say, yes, I love the peas. And when you say, do you, do you like, do you like the sugar cereal? And you shake your head back and forth with a disapproving look. Um, the toddler will say, no, I don't like that. I like the peas better. So when you frame the whole conversation in terms of trails and then say, you know, later on, we'll get back to the whole open space question. I've seen this done time and time again. And the open space question never comes back because then then it becomes time constraints and money constraints and all of this. And so I, I think it's really important to, I know you have a script and I know you have bullet points that you're working on, but it would be really nice to include that stuff now and start having conversations about that now. It's it's because this is the time to actually bin that stuff um, because otherwise, uh, you know, with the report that you're going to give to the county council is, yeah, trails are really important and preserving um, historic 
uh, spaces are important and preventing erosion is important. And the council is going to say, see, well, this, this jibes well with our plan to, to develop housing in open space. And, and I, I think the council and the, the, the the county bureaucracy actually needs to hear loud and clear that most of us users and most of us longtime residents in this town don't think it's okay to bulldoze no. open space and turn it yeah. into house. I think that needs to be heard loud and clear, and I think yeah. it needs to be part of the upfront conversation. Absolutely. So what I'm going to propose is actually, do you mind putting your contact information into, you could either send it to me directly, however you feel comfortable into the chat. I think it's worth a follow-up conversation, but I also wanted to emphasize this is these are our first two listening sessions and these aren't the only touch points we'll be having with the community. We're definitely coming back for follow-up meetings and follow-up site visits. And I think it'd be even better if we could do this kind of in person and maybe check out some of these open spaces that you've referenced and make sure that we're understanding exactly what you're saying. Um, yes, I think given the constraints of tonight, it just might not, we can have a high level conversation, but yeah, we want to make sure we get to everything we've got planned. I hope you No, and I'm, I'll happily send you that information. I just, when I, when I hear these things and I hear stuff like this and further follow-up sessions and things, it it's like this weird deja vu groundhog mm -hmm. day thing. Mm -hmm. I, as I have heard this, I, I literally have heard this dozens of times during my residency here in this town. And over time, more and more stuff gets whittled away little little by little. And eventually everybody looks around and says, hey, you know, what happened to those tennis courts we used to have over there? What happened to that that facility? So anyway, thank you very much for, for considering that. Yeah. And, and let me say too, yeah, if they're, yeah, feel free to just pop it into the chat there and we'll make sure to follow up. So, um, and then I do want to just make sure we're mindful of time. So Jared, if you don't mind, just keep in your comment to a minute or two, go for it. Sure. I'll be short. I, I 100% agree with the previous set of comments. We've gone through these cycles where well, we're going to develop all this. We have great plans, but not all of the constituencies are included. Mm. And then it gets to a, a county council and it's a very contentious meeting and the sides are, you know, picketing and fighting for their point. And I think you would circumvent a lot of the contention and the, 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 uh, the difficulties if you include everything up front and and make sure that all of the constituencies are included and contributing and not ignoring some of the very high um, priorities of the major number of taxpayers in the community. Because if you really went and looked at the surveys, you would see that the majority of the taxpayers in the community want open space. They're, yeah. they're, they love trails, they support mountain biking, they like equestrian, but they don't want the open space attack. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's really important. So I, I, I promise that's something we're going to look into more. And I think that's something that we just need to build our understanding on, frankly, as um, consultants. And we're going to do our due diligence to do that because that is a, a, a concern, like a primary concern from what we're hearing. So no, I'm glad you're you're reinforcing that. Um, so I will say too, just for the sake of time, um, we have these three sets and we're going to take about 20 minutes on each of these sets of questions, give or take. If you guys are having great dis discussion, you know, continue to um, have those discussions. Don't feel like that 20 minutes is a hard and fast rule. Um, but as I mentioned, we'll have Bob Oberdorfer facilitating one group and then Ali Kasky facilitating another. And um, hopefully this gives you guys each a chance to um, hear, hear from more people and more voices as we get into these breakout rooms. Um, so I'll be keeping track of time a little bit on the back end, but if you have any questions, and let me see, I just see one. Okay, perfect. Um, just wanna make sure I get everything there in the chat. I'm gonna send you guys off to your breakout rooms here in just a minute. Okay, and I think it'll give you 60 seconds to join the one that is prompted in front of you. Um, and if you don't, I think it'll automatically send you. <laughs> so one way or the other.